Fungi, the fungal kingdom, are one of the least studied groups of organisms. Hi, I'm Alistair McTaggart. I'm a research fellow at the University of Queensland in the Centre for Horticultural Science. I'm a mycologist and fungal geneticist. I've worked on fungi for the last 13 years, but mostly I've worked on fungi that cause problems uh, for agriculture. So at the bad side of mycology, and really in COVID, it was kind of a catalyst to start to change the way I look at, look at mushrooms. Fungi in Australia, in fact, in the world, we refer to them as microbial dark matter. We've got names for 2% of all fungi. Australian native mushrooms are very different to mushrooms, say, in Central America and the Americas. And scientists have for a long time known that there are Gondwanan mushrooms that they can differentiate from America. Um, we do have introduced mushrooms as well. So things like the gold top or the blue meanies. Magic mushrooms are mushrooms that produce psilocybin which is a psychoactive compound that is now being touted as having breakthrough properties in the treatment of human mental health conditions. I've been a long-term pain sufferer and that's when I first became interested in magic mushrooms. I had cranial nerve damage which causes a lot of pain and magic mushrooms and psilocybin have been uh, shown to regrow nerves. So this is where I first sparked interest. We do have native magic mushrooms, they've been here uh, at least since the 1920s when they were first described from Australia, but likely for a lot longer than that, probably predating arrival of humans. They grow all over the eastern coast of Australia. They grow down to Tasmania, um, in Perth. They've been recorded in Perth. They occur in New Zealand as well. And Papua New Guinea has its own diversity of native magic mushrooms. So, uh, Australia's native magic mushrooms will have been separated from other magic mushrooms since Australia separated from Gondwana. Um, and in that time, they will have changed the way that they produce psilocybin over time. So the genetic pathway to produce psilocybin. Um, I think it would be particularly interesting to look at what changes have accumulated in the genetic pathways to produce psilocybin. We have a diversity here in Australia that is totally unstudied. Um, we don't know what's there. This is, to me, this is a problem. I think it's a good idea to start looking to show that we do have native species, to show the genetics behind those and whether they can be exploited for use in industry in the future, um, or whether our native mushrooms have spread internationally. One of the reasons we don't know very much about Australian mushrooms is because you have a risk. Um, in fact, just two weekends ago, as part of this project, I was going to look for magic mushrooms and I was photographing uh, mushrooms that I thought were magic mushrooms, Psilocybe subaeruginosa, on a log. And uh, it wasn't until I got them home and had done a spore print that I identified them as a species of gallerina, which is toxic. Magic mushrooms are illegal. You're not supposed to have them in your possession. They're a Schedule 9. Um, drug much like heroin or LSD. I work at the largest culture collection of fungi in Australia um, and so everything that we collect we culture, uh, we grow it as a haploid stage which is kind of the gametic asexual stage. Um, technically you can't grow a mushroom from whatever I've cultured um, but in the future you might be able to cross different cultures to breed for certain properties. I think right now there is a lot of interest in medicinal fungi or magic mushrooms as, as medicinal sources. If we look to the future that perhaps there will be a psilocybin industry um, for treatment of mental health, we could assume that people will have to grow magic mushrooms. And this is where this kind of knowledge about Australian native magic mushrooms will come in handy. We'll be able to tailor or to grow different mushrooms that produce different ratios of psilocybin to psilocin, another psychoactive compound. Um, maybe we'll be able to find mushrooms that grow faster or are better suited to upscale production. And I think that that industry will learn a lot from the cannabis industry. And we might see that the industry gets taken up by people who are already in the cannabis industry, who've had practice growing um, controlled substances. Or maybe we'll have current mushroom growers who already have the infrastructure and the experience of growing mushrooms start to produce magic mushrooms um, for medical use. My project has a couple of different aims. 
Firstly, I'd like to test that the species Psilocybe subaeruginosa is native to Australia and that this is the centre of origin. I would like to test whether Psilocybe cubensis or a gold top is introduced or whether it's native. We suspect, we hypothesise that it is introduced. Um, along the way, we'll sequence genomes of every single mushroom that we collect to study the pathways to produce psilocybin, the genetic pathways, and look at variation in those. And as a byproduct or an outcome, we end up having a, a culture collection, a resource, a biological resource that we can always go back to.